had to get to that money. I had to get to that quality, 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 quality. The twenties, the fifties, the hundreds. I had to get to them dollars, 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 dollars. Watch me run up a check on these yeah. I had to get to that quality, 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 quality. Watch me run up a check on these Very, very relaxed over the past couple of weeks, and he's brought a great deal of family and friends with him. His dad's in this corner, his mum's here, his partner's here, even one of his daughters who's just 18 months old. They've made a lot of noise at the press conferences, and they're absolutely 100% confident they are going back with the world title tonight. They believe they have a special gem, but the special one is about to come out. And now making his entrance to the ring, the defending world champion, the special one, Kel, Special K. professional career that he's got what it takes to win this tonight spence jr four years fresher the same height that weight so crucial how much did it take out of the pair of them to get to 10 stone seven and what on earth are they wearing way tonight he's been around a long time Calvert, professionally seasoned both big punches 
A really enticing tail of the tape. So many see it as 50 50. But Spence is 7 to 4 on to win. A lot see it going by knockout. Some the distance. 22 to 1 to draw. We just don't know. It's fascinating. It is. I mean, this is this is arguably the best fight the world's weight division that could happen. It's a real treat for the boxing purists, this one. I mean, everybody's been talking about this on a build-up all week. Nobody can really pick a winner, but it's fair to say Spence is the favourite. The atmosphere in Wembley last month, incredible. This one, though, is pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we honor challenger and champion with their respective national anthems. First, for the challenger, the national anthem of the United States of America, the Star Spangled Banner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem for the United Kingdom, God Save the Queen. gentlemen from Bramall Lane Sheffield Yorkshire England this is the main event of the evening and it's all brought to you by Eddie Hearn for matchroom boxing in association with TGB promotions it's live on Sky Sports box office and live to America on Showtime the main event 12 rounds of boxing for the welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by BetSafe, StubHub, and JD Sports, and sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Supervisor and President Charles Giles, and the International Boxing Federation, President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor from the United States, Anibal Miramontes. Timekeeper at the bell is Barry Pinder. The three judges scoring this bout from the United States, Adelaide Bird. From Mexico, Alejandro Lopez. And from the United Kingdom, Dave Paris. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee, Howard Foster. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are ready. Boxing fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions around the world who wish they could be here, ladies and gentlemen from Sheffield, England, let's get ready to rumble!
Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Derek James, wearing white with gold. His official weight, 10 stone, 6 pounds, 5 ounces. His professional record is a perfect one. 21 fights, 21 victories, including 18 big wins by knockout. From DeSoto, Texas, USA, the IBF number one ranked challenger in the world, Earl the Truth Spence Jr. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Dominic Engel. He's wearing red and white and officially weighed in at 10 stone, 6 pounds, 7 ounces. In 37 professional fights, he has 36 victories, including 25 wins by knockout and one defeat. That defeat in the middleweight division as he is undefeated as a welterweight. He's the fighting pride of Sheffield, Yorkshire, England, the reigning, defending, IBF, welterweight champion of the world, the special one, Hell, Special K. Spoke to you both in the dressing room. You both are I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both of you watch your heads in close. Good luck to you both. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. One of the greatest matchups, not just in this thriving 10 stone 7 division, but at any weight in recent months. As Sheffield's Kell Brook puts his treasured IBF crown on the line on this enormous home stage. It's the litmus test for Errol Spence Jr. The cool cat with the oozing confidence. What of Brooks' weight over 12 hard rounds? Will Spence unleash vicious body shots? Can the American cope at this level? Is he a sensation in the making? Or will Kelbrook prove formidable and ruthless as so often he does? Well, this is where we find out now if Kel Brook really is the king of the welterweights because he's in against a real stiff test in Errol Spence. I mean, this guy's a quality fighter. He's going to sit back behind a southpaw jab early on, but there's a thunderous left cross waiting for Kel Brook if he makes any kind of mistake early on. A thunderous left cross and maybe a thunderous right hand from Brook, who loves fighting southpaws. He blew away Kevin McIntyre all those years ago. For the British belt in Glasgow. And he's knocked every single port side around his face, but he is coming off that defeat to Gennady Golovkin. And he admits it's been a right struggle making 10 stone seven. But he looks big in there. Rehydrated, recarved. Trying to get that jab going and a positive start from Brooke. Very positive from Brock. Nice jab, looking for the right hand to the body. Wasting nothing. Beautiful footwork. Nice distance. Great reflex. Always had cut like reflexes, but he times that right hand counter beautifully off that back foot. And Errol Spence knows he's in with a test here. Always had good feet as well, too. The thick thighs of Calbrook. He just switches south ball momentarily circumspect from Spence Jr. so far, but trying to unload a body shot early on. That'll be the tactics to work that midsection and find out if Brook really is a welterweight or whether he should have gone up to super welterweight and vacated the crown. But he didn't want to, go. No, he was adamant he wanted to come back down to welterweight where he is IBF king. And now he's got this defence, this mandatory defence. And it really is a stiff test. Kelbrook not looking out of his depth here. Speed-wise, people thought he might have struggled coming down to the weight, but it's early doors, it's only round one, but this is, this is really tight. Nothing really to split them. Remember, Spence Jr., a pre-fight betting favourite. 
money piled on him in recent days in Vegas. But Kelbrook's been an underdog before, and that just spurs him on. Another body shot from the American. Speed is so key here. It is. Heads just coming desperately close together there. Some nice body work there from Errol Spence. Good opener. in the build-up plenty of respect between the player and plenty between the fighters the Sheffield United colors of special Kel Brook and the truth Errol Spence jr. in the white with the gold tassels is he a golden hope of American boxing uh, will be exposed here by the fleet fists of Kel Brook who's got the experience but Spence Jr. with so much talent through the amateurs and through those 21 wins so far. Feet coming together there. Quite awkwardly, it's commonly seen it when a southpaw fights an orthodox. Kelbrook found his range quite early and having some good success here in the second round. Yep, right hand, put it up with an uppercut. Will he test Spence Jr.'s chin? He's been shaken momentarily once. I noticed, I think it was in the Bundu fight. Also got a good win over Chris Algeri, Errol Spence, but nothing at this level in this league. Kelbrook proved himself over in the States against Sean Porter. Now it's Spence's turn. Do you think Brooks settling better? He has settled in, but I mean, it's very intense. Spencer backing him up, looking to get in close, looking for that body shot, couple drove down a little bit low, there's that body shot, he landed some nice body shots in the first round and, and when them shots go in, but this is great response from Kale Bro, I mean he's getting in with some nice lead right hands and then working the body and, and he's able to get off and keep that distance and just be away from the counter shot that comes back to him Brook has definitely found his distance and timing Mixing it out, nice shot Spence has to take a couple there like it, Come on. Bring him up, Bring him up. trying to Power his way forward, Kel Brook. He's got a good jab, Errol Spence, when he uses it. And he, he, he pulls it out, but when he lands, it takes the head back of Kel Brook. But Brook landing some nice eye catching shots this round. Good defense there from Errol Spence Jr. And he's having to close the distance here. He's having to march forward with a high guard. He's realizing that Kel Brook is a really effective counter puncher and he's got fast hands. So Spence here forcing Brook back with that high defense. Not great tactics, but he's obviously confident in his own punching power and his ability to take a punch because he's walking forward, showing not much respect here for Brook, who's actually dominating here with his boxing ability. This is good work side to side from Kel Brook, utilizing the angles, body and head as well. Turn south for. Yeah, there's some nice body work going on from Kel Brook. See it there, that right hand to the body. He's picking that shot, and that will take away the win from Spence. Shot from Spence down the pipe, though. Back he comes. Fraught with danger. This defence. And it's shaping up well. He's a stopping. You're going to punch yourself out. When he's not doing what, just tell him. And then work him. Tell him work him. Do you understand? Stop it. Nassim Hammer joining us at ringside. What do you think of Kel's style? Up tonight, it's very good. Um, 
Up to now is very good. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying this. Kel's backing him up. Kel's doing very well. He just needs to keep on his job and keep his head movement. Do you think the uh, all-round experience and ability of Kelbro will prove too much for a man who is having his first test at this level? Or has Spence got more tricks up his sleeve? No, well, we're yet to see in the later rounds or the middle rounds what's going to happen. But this is, a, like I said, a big test for both of them. But Kel Brook right now is winning this fight. It's a positive start from the Sheffield 31-year-old. Four years older than Errol Spence Jr. Some of the Americans also wondering whether this was just a bit too soon, whether he was too raw, Errol Spence. But a good left hand there, and he's got real power too. 18 knockouts. Very dangerous. Brooks always had a pretty solid chin. Was buzzed by... Sedchenko was down early in his career as well. Errol Spence realised in that last round he was getting half box and half counterpunch with Kel's fast hands and his tricky footwork. And he's, he's come out this round and just seemed to be applying quite effective pressure. He's got a good side for jab. And when he's in close, you can see that strength. Good luck shot there from Spence and a body shot that follows. And now he's beginning to settle the American. Kel brought back up there with his chin in the air, tried to spin off on the ropes, and they left his head out to dry. And that right hook from Spence went in, and I think Kel Brook felt that and realizes now he needs to tighten his defense up. More urgency in the work of Errol Spence now in this round. Yep, utilizing the ring, light on his feet. Errol Spence trying to work out on the inside up close. People shouting and screaming all around us at ringside. The fervent support for Kel Brook. But Errol Spence with a wry smile on his face. We can see this really is a top level quality fight between two of the best welterweights in the world. Neither of them really wanted to give an inch. Both landed nice, accurate, clean shot. Both boxing well. Spence on his back foot. Kel Brook having to apply more pressure now because he's had a bad start to the round. Yeah, it was better in the beginning of the third from Errol Spence Jr. <laughs> Who's going to land the first really hurtful punch? And will it be to head or to body? Well, I think Spencer landed a nice right hook earlier on in this round. That made Brooke realise that he's in with a bit of a puncher. Spence looking a bit wild there, a bit desperate. Well, doesn't he really need to take any chances at this stage? He's looked a million dollars, he really has, on his ascent, his rise, Errol Spence Jr. Won virtually every single round of every single fight. But now he's under pressure. Now he's in with a man who's experienced long, hard fights. And being in with Gennady Golovkin, too. The jab over the top against the southpaw, the orthodox and southpaw styles. Yeah, well, Kelbrook sits back on that right foot, transfers the weight so, so fast and sharp, and he, there's the counter punches there. From Brook, he does it so well, so effective. When he's stepping across you there, don't be so funny. Right, you got his intent, because you'll get, he's dangerous. So as he comes across... Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round four. It's the fourth round, the 188th of Kel Brooks professional career. It's only the 81st for Errol Spence Jr. Straight out of the blocks, Brook. It's the Texan who's got center ring. Real tension here, and there's the right hand of Kel Brook that he's called his chocolate brownie. Time and again we've heard that. Errol Spence 
laughing eventually about having none of it and coming back with a left hook of his own. Well, he throws that lead right hand, Kelbrock, and a counter right hand so effectively. There's a lot of power on it. And Spencer feeling that. Kelbrock landing some nice shots, but Spencer just sending a nice reply himself. Really beginning to warm up here. Well, neither fighter wanted to give any ground and show any weakness to his opponent. Both so positive and aggressive. Here comes Spence Jr. And Spence. Brooke is backed up on the ropes and shipping some of these body shots. Well, Spence is the one that wants to apply the pressure as, as Brooke backs up and tries to spin off. And get behind that jab and give himself a little bit more time. It's Spencer is the fighter that wants to push forward and force the pace. So we show that he's eager, but can he maintain it? Love to the mouth, cut lip for Errol Spence Jr. Well, that tough fight that Kelbrook had with Carson Jones. All those uh, experiences that he's had to come through. And Errol Spence Jr. is really doing this for the first time. The talent's there. We've seen it in the last three or four years with Spence. Can he deliver it all together on a world championship night and on a stage as big as this? Well, in fights that are close, you have to draw on that experience. And you said there, Brooke has got the more experience in the danger zone. You know, when it's not going his own way, he's able to turn it around. And he can draw on that experience from past fights in this fight, if and when it gets hard for him. I mean, this is tough for both men. But you'd have to say, the experience favours Brooke massively. For Errol Spencer, you know, it doesn't mean you can write him off. Not at all. So some really good punches landed already. Brooke trying to drag Spence into a close, personal, hard fight. Right hand from Brooke. Errol Spence trying to get something going there on his back foot, and Brooke responding brilliantly. I mean, Brooke really is leading the charge, and then when the counter comes back at him, he's happy to then respond himself. Yep, Reed's fight so well, Brooke. But Spence Jr. has solved every single puzzle in front of him so far and done it spectacularly. First man to stop Chris Algieri, something Amir Khan and Manny Pacquiao couldn't do. He stopped Leonard Bundu, something Keith Thurman couldn't. This is a real power puncher. Which corner will be happier? I think the work of Kel Brook now, I mean, it's still a hard fight for him. Errol Spence is still coming, but Brook seems to have settled down better. He's, he's using his jab one, and his counter right hand's great. And up close, he seems to be having the final say and the last of the argument. Errol Spence needs to get a bit of urgency in his work. Away from home. Dominic Ingle here in the corner. And then push him up. You'll be done. Tear yourself out, then go then boxing, save the energy, because he's beginning to drain. He's beginning to drain. You got him, Kel. Mixed reaction already on the benches at ringside as to who has got the better of the first four rounds, whether Kel Brooks in front, whether Errol Spence Jr. is. Three judges at ringside. Our own Dave Paris, Adelaide Bird, Alejandro Lopez. Will they be needed? Kelbrook has said in the build-up, he thinks both of them might touch down. They might taste the canvas. Body shot from Brook. Looking really strong, Kelbrook. Nice right hands and up close physically, he's able to manhandle Spence. And, you know, if, we, if we're worried about Kelbrook getting tired in the final round, I can't see that happening because he's able to manhandle Spence here early on and up close, push him back with that left hand and lean on him. It might be that natural size advantage he's got that could be the telling fact here. Greg Marriott, his nutritionist, who said he's uh, come in at about 11.10 on the night after the rehydration. Spence Jr. apparently about 11.7. So they both packed on the pound. They both made the uh, reway in this morning. Will it come down to weight and down to stamina as we move towards those championship rounds starting to work the body as well now as he puts spence on his back foot he's effective for them body shots Kelbrook. counter jab and then that right hand as he goes in body or head 
and they're the kind of punches that drain you when you're on the receiving end of them. Elite fighters, brains ticking over, working out their next move. A chess match at times, and brutality at others. Really, really good signs here for Kel Brook early on. If he can maintain this, this is going well. I mean, Errol Spence, don't get me wrong, big puncher, firing back, letting shots go, but he's just falling short. His timing seems to just be out. And, you know, he's not mixed at this level. Let's not forget Kel Brook. Oh, right hand from Brook. Peach in the shot in the fifth round. And his chin was exposed there. Errol Spence Jr. Really good counter right hook there from Kel Brook. He stepped to the right slightly. Made Spence a mix and went right in with that right hook. Effective shot. Doesn't look quite as confident, the American, in this round. No, I think he realises that he's in against a quality fighter in Kel Brook. He's going to have to try and change something. And it's not quite working for him. And Brook switch hitting. Trained on those lines and circles in the Wickerback gym. But Spence Jr. comes back with a right volley here. Applying the pressure on Brook. Great fifth. Both having their success. A little bit of a desperation work there from Errol Spence. Brook caught him with a left up, got a lead up for court quality. Then Spencer had him on the ropes, so he just worked, let the shots go for the sake of it. But Brook really dominating for me in that round, looking really well. Cal Brook just looking down at Nassim Hammond at ringside. Let's just listen to Dominic Ingle, man. It's a nice dip goal. He's actually dipping down. But just find yourself getting some fly on that side and you're that jab. Give me some Vaseline, please. Listen, we're all we're only halfway through. Important round that fifth, Naz. What did you think? Kel's doing unbelievable now. I'm just watching him. He looks strong. He looks good now. For me, he's still he's still commanding, still in charge of this fight. What can I say? I'm watching a winner right now. I think he's feeling the heat. I think Spence is feeling the heat when he gets hit. Right? Come on, Kel. Kel's got to carry on doing what he's doing. Let's go. Just uh, caught Paulie Malinaji's eye working for Showtime. He thinks Brooks in front. Steve Farhood, the uh, excellent analysis who's with Paulie, thinks Brooks in front by three. One or two others at ringside feel it's closer. Was that a crucial round of the fifth? As Cal Brooks starts the sixth in powerful fashion. And Errol Spence just seems to hang on there, looking a bit ragged as he tries to deliver body shots. Well, Spencer here having to do something different, having to apply this Brook and rugged tactics to put Brook on his back foot and test his heart and his fitness back down now well to wait. If Spencer is going to have any success and have any, cause any problems for Brook, this is how he's going to do it. He's fighting fire with fire here. Spence Jr. trying to stay in the pocket, apply the pressure to Kel Brook's body. Right tactics, we're going to find out, because Brook's work is good. I think Errol Spence has realised when he sits back, he's not fast enough and he's not good enough. I think the superior skills of Brook are just outclassing him. I say outclassing, it sounds wide, it's not wide, but he just seems to be in front, having that edge, Brook, when they're a distance. More body shots attempted from Errol Spence Jr. And a jab too. And when they come together, when they come close, Brook seems to be the stronger of the two. He seems to have that more physical weight advantage and that strength, which can be so desperately telling as his fight draws on. This may be at welterweight, but he proved he had strength at middleweight. He took some of Gennady Golovkin's biggest shots. Yes, he didn't win the fight, but he came out almost spitting defiance. And, you know, that risk didn't look too terrible, did it? No, not at all. He was stopped on his feet against getting the Golovkin up a middleweight. He wanted to carry on. Even with that injury to the eye socket, which was terrible, obscured his vision. So he's really not concerned about what's coming in back here from Errol Spence. Titanium in the eye. And a steely feel about Calbrook all the way through the build-up. How determined and dedicated he is. But Errol Spence Jr. wants this so much. The family's over. He believes the belt's going back to Texas. Right hand from Brooke. 
Looking strong here. And Spence having a shit punishment and holding on. And a right from Brooke. And an uppercut. And is he beginning to get to Errol Spence at the end of the sixth round? Just a ragged feel to the Texan. Well, Errol Spence really trying to dig his feet into the ground, gritting his teeth and really letting some heavy shots go. But Kel Brook just looks that physically strong and he's able to push him back after he's landed his shot. Big round for Brook. Star studded cast here. Sean Porter is with Andy. Sean, you've been shouting plenty of encouragement for Errol Spence Jr., your countryman. How are you seeing this one so far? Uh, close. Uh, I actually have it uh, tie score right now. Three rounds to three. Uh, both guys are doing uh, fabulous. Both using the jab very well and countering very well. It's very hard uh, for these guys to time each other because they're so quick with the counter. I'm screaming offense to defense because he's very quick. Kell is very quick with the counter, and, and so is Earl as well. What would you like to see Errol do more of? Honestly, I would like to see Earl push forward more. I think if he pushes forward more on Kell and keeps him on his heels, he'll force he'll force Kell to the ropes and and give the impression that he's winning, and also will force Kell to hold him and grab him, which will stop him from using his offense. At this point, how do you see this one going from here on? At this point, I see it going back and forth exactly like we thought it would. Right now, I got it three rounds to three. We'll see what happens. Thanks, Sean. Sean Porter has it absolutely level. Tony Bellew has. Three up to Kell Brook. How are you seeing it, Carl? I've got Brook five up. I just think, I mean, round one was close. Could have gone either way, but some nice body shots went in there from Spence. But since then, I just like what Brook's doing. The Americans behind us. And I've got Kell Brook a couple up at the halfway stage. Of course, this is all unofficial. Three judges at ringside. Remember the champion, Kell Brook, making the fourth defense of his IBF welterweight bout against the dangerous mandatory challenger Errol Spence Jr. Cracking matchup, what happens next? It just seemed to me, Carl, as though Brook was beginning to break him up a touch in that sixth. He did, yes. In the sixth round, it looked like he was breaking him down, like you say, just slightly. Signs of fatigue or frustration or whatever it was from Errol Spence. He was being busy and he's still letting big shots go, but Brook making it awkward for him. I mean, he throws some quite unorthodox shots. Let's not forget, he's got a Brendan Ingle style. Although he's not got the conventional Ingle style like Nassim Mamma in these days, he's still got an awkwardness about his style. Lead off for Cox, little step to the side, he switches to Southpaw. But the physical strength I'm seeing seems to be the telling factor. Yep, he's also swarming all over Errol Spence Jr., not giving him a break. The American still with the fast hands. But Brooke continues to look strong and steady and so focused. Back comes Spence though. The combinations. That fleet of foot he has got. That's what impressed Floyd Mayweather when they sparred at the beginning of Errol's uh, professional career, talks to Floyd regularly. Also, Oscar De La Hoya, a big fan of Errol Spence Jr. and neither promoted. The Americans have got excited about him as he gets a left hook away. Kel back in Spence up here, not really having the success he's had in the last couple of rounds. Spence is slipping and sliding, when they come up close, able to just come together and then turn him off and get back behind that jab. Yeah, good work from Spence here in the seven. I think the pressure from Kel Brooks just slightly slowed down and that's, that's made a bit of a difference in the way this fight's going for me. Come on, left hooks as well got in. And now he looks a bit ragged, Brook. Topsy-turvy. Is there a swing here? Well, if we ever had any concern, it would have been in the second half of the fight with Kelbrook coming down from middleweight. Let's hope he's not starting to feel that weight loss. Good session for Errol Spence Jr. Will his body shots pay dividend later on in the fight? How do we know? Aesthetically, he looks terrific, Kelbrook. He's had the 12, 14 week training camp. Is it just something that could catch up? It could do, I mean, 
Do you look for middleweight, and when you look in the shape that Brook was in at middleweight, he wasn't fleshy. He was solid, he was ripped. So he's had to take off muscle. And when you take muscle off, it's fatiguing. But he did it over a longer period of time. So he could he could be fine, but that's the only thing we can look at. Round eight. This wonderful welterweight division. Champions Keith Thurman, Lamont Peterson, Kelbrook here, Manny Pacquiao. Add to that Danny Garcia, Sean Porter at ringside, Amir Khan in our studio, Adrian Broner, Jesse Vargas. A bustling, bubbling 10 stone 7 scene and some huge fights for the winner of this. But who will win? We've seen some good speed here from Errol Spence early. Jab with that side force stance, then counter jab, left cross. And he seems to be just effective with that jab and that speed at this minute. I mean, Kelbrook, I think, needs to get to work. Head and body from Errol Spence Jr. Back right hand comes Kelbrook, tit for tat at times. He really had to force it, Kelbrook, to get that success. And when he does that, strength tells, and here it comes again. When he closes the distance, Brook looks a different animal. Spence Jr. wants space to let those fast fists fly. Spence are looking quite comfortable when he comes in close, quite you know confident with that high guard and that good defence and that sharp jab. Kel Brook seems to have just lost a bit of his sharpness and a bit of his spite. Here comes Spence Jr. with another drive. It's interesting, it's one fight when Brook backs up Spence, but as soon as he's got room and he can utilise those those legs. Spence just seems to have that advantage with that yep. jab and a slight bit of speed when they're just out of range, but up close, Brook's able to lean on him, but he's landing lead, lead, lead left crosses now, Spence, and the jab's been effective this round. It really is fascinating, the zip of the 27-year-old against the experience of the 31 year old good shot from spence and a lovely combination as well nice combo from spence jabs and then hooks flying in with no real response from kel brook yeah suddenly he looks strong again errol spence jr and if brook allows him to work just at his comfortable range and he'll draw confidence from that he was just annoyed by a shot there kel brook bit of swelling as well yeah marking up around the face brook Good work from Errol Spence. Back comes Brook with a couple of clubbing shots. But the scoring punches with the American. That was back of the head from Brook. And the left eye is swelling badly of Kel Brook. It was the right that went. Steeman forward. Brooke. Brooke. Big clumsy now coming forward. Steeman then using his weight, just leading in, but walking into counters. And the face marking up quite badly there, especially around that left eye. Looks a bit unsteady as he goes back to his corner, Kelbrook. Good patch of the fight for Errol Spence Jr. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Be brief, be brief. You don't look like he has to me. Right, listen to me. Listen to me. This last round eight, you've got four more rounds. You're steadying this kid up now. You've got four rounds to get through this and get on top of him. You're in front, you understand? You've got to keep in front, you've got to be smart. Right? There's no way out in this fight. You've got 12 rounds to do. You understand? That's what we're going to do with this kid. Right? He's had his best burst. He's had his best burst. You understand? Don't move up to us. He's had his best burst. Alright, deep breathe, deep breathe, deep breathe. Deep breathe. Deep breathe. Deep breathe. Deep breathe. Give some water. Give some water. Just gauging opinion of ringside. Sean Porter has Errol Spence a couple up. Tony Bellew has Kelbrook one up. Darren Barker, Kelbrook a couple. Steve Farhood for the Americans has got it all square. But he's given Errol Spence the last three rounds. Five to go in this enthralling world welterweight title fight. How are you seeing it? Well, I've got Brook, a couple up, having a bit of early success here in round nine. 
I've still got Brooke a couple up, but losing the last couple of rounds, he seemed to have dropped the pace. I think it's very close. Errol Spence coming on strong. And this was the period of the fight that many worried for the British man with that weight-making issue. But Errol Spence Jr. is also untested at this level over this distance. I'm just concerned for Brock that he's slowed down with the pace and Spencer has had some success. So you'll draw confidence from that as this fight goes into these championship rounds. Take loose and a breather. Errol Spence Jr. has absolutely whipped himself into shape in Texas alongside the Charlo brothers. He wants this so bad. He believes it's the coronation. What a close, tight fight. What a treat for fight fans that we're getting these matches on, Carl. That's right, well, Brooke got the experience now to, to know that he needs to start to work. That left eye looking quite badly marked up and swelling. In these championship rounds where we expect Brooke to step it up, but Spencer looks the fresher of the two. Worrying signs, really, for, for the Brook camp. Oh, Spence good shot from Errol Spence Jr. there. His accuracy is excellent. His movement is getting better and better. And that eye is getting worse of Kel Brook. I think Brook needs to try and impose himself, put his weight, the extra weight and strength that we saw early on. He needs to try and get up close with Spence and just let some shots go and lean on him and push him back and try and rough him up because at this sort of range against a southpaw, a fast southpaw that's still fresh enough to let big shots go, this could be troubling for Brooke. Really applying the pressure now, big left hook from Errol Spence Jr. Brooke tries to back him up into his own corner, but there's not as much coming from the Sheffield man now. It's really noticeable. It's Spence Jr. in the driving seat, and there's a right hand, and these are worrying moments for Kelbrook and his team. Oh, big shots from Errol Spence Jr. Kelbrook hurt there, let's not forget, he's a big banger, a big, big puncher, Spence. And he's landing in the last 30 seconds of the ninth round, and here comes Spence. And Kelbrook has got to hold on and use his experience, because he's in real bother now. He is in real bother. Ship some heavy shots there from Spence, who can see the damage he's doing. As Brook backs up here, he needs to hold. He, he needs, needs to try. He needs the bell call because this is a massive round for Errol Spence Jr., who's showing us his class and showing us his staying power. Brook raises his arm, but that was torrid and turbulent. Well, this is them championship rounds that we talked about in the last four rounds. Right, be smart. Right. This fight's not over, you listen to me. Deep breathe. Get your mind composed there. You've got four rounds. Do you understand? Right, he's throwing everything. He's throwing everything. Right, and there's nothing in them shots. They're only hitting you when you're stood there. You've got to move, you've got to be smart and get behind his elbow. Stop it. And he gets tired, so you've got to work. Just getting more animated in the corner, Dominic Ingle. It's not panic stations, is it? Well, Dominic Ingle knows how close his fight is. He knows that Kelbrook was successful early on. And this is his time. It's his title. It's his hometown. So anything close will go his way. But Spencer here really starting to pull away. And there's signs of desperation from Brook at the end of that round. Adam Booth behind us has got it level. Paulie Malinaji has got Errol Spence now in the lead. And I think for the first time in the fight, nine minutes to go. Is there a change of the guard? Or will Kelbrook manage to see out these nine minutes and retain his IBF title? It has gone deep. But Errol Spence Jr. is the one who's had much more success in the last few minutes. Oh, Kelbrook's hurt here, and he's down in the 10th round, and it's so early. And it was an accumulation, and that line is terrible. Unfortunately for Kel Brook, this is desperate time, he's badly injured now with that eye, and here comes Spence again. Errol Spence Jr. on the verge of the coronation, Kel Brook tottering all over the ring, he's going to be taken out here. The championship is about to change hands, surely. Kel Brook needs to hold, he comes back bravely, Brook. Alan Foster was so close there, he's looking up. Kelbrook 
Chai Championship heart and a real grit. Brooks not going to give it up that easy, but he's on the back foot taking some heavy blows. He's literally on the fringe of being stopped and managing somehow to stay in this fight. We know that Earl Spence is a big puncher in his landing. Body shots, Spence now to the head. Brooks so brave, trying desperately with his home crowd. A minute 15 left in this 10th round. It's been a nightmare for Calbrook. But he tries to turn Errol Spence and hang on. What a man Calbrook is, what a fighter. He's not going to give up. This is unbelievable because he's been hit hard with some heavy shot. Spence is almost punching himself out. And amazingly, here comes Calbrook still, still defiant in the face. And that's for Calbrook, and the right hand! Unbelievable scenes here! Extraordinary fight! How is Calbrook still in this? Well, he's not a quitter. He's a warrior, we saw that against Golovkin. He's strong, he's determined, he believes in himself, but even on the end of them heavy blows from Spence, he's still managing to find a way to stay in this round. Anthony Joshua was a couple of punches away from losing at Wembley. Kelbrook surely maybe one punch away from losing there, but somehow he's dragged himself back. They're utilising, fueling off this home support, Carl. I mean, there's a chance that Spencer here could punch himself out. And if that happens and Brook leans on him and manages to land something, who knows? But torrid round for Carl Brook. How he's still in this, still making this competitive is unbelievable. What a round of boxing from both men. Amazing. Incredible conditioning. How did Brooks survive? Down, almost out. And it was Errol Spence Jr. who was looking tired at the end of it. He was. I mean, Kel Brook, you got the knockdown, so you've got to score it 10 8 against Brook. But it was Spencer that was looking, or waiting for that bell to ring. Unbelievably. I mean, what I saw there from Brook, because he was badly hurt on the end of big shots here on his back foot, as we're seeing. And the replays for this round and Kelbrook here pushing him back and coming back into the round and finishing strong. Break his heart, Kelly. Listen to me. So you got to do with him. He's not going to walk in here and do you in. Another drink, right? Compose yourself and get them shots accurate because they're draining them every time you're pinging. Right? Believe in yourself. Listen to me. Right. Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake Lamotta. They're cheering in the corner. They're saying, break his heart. Does he need a knockout, Kelbrook? In the 11th round, six to go. The Americans have Spence three up. You've now got Spence up for the first time in the fight. He might need to stop him if he's going to keep his title here, Kelbrook. But Errol Spence Jr. coming so close to halting the fight in the 10th. I think that minute rest will do Spencer more good than it will do Kelbrook, unfortunately, because he's the younger man, the fresher man. And that could be the difference here. Kelbrook badly injured around the face and around that eye, but look at him, he means business. He just wants to get straight back in there and start landing them shots. This is brilliant from Errol Spence Jr. Absolutely fantastic four or five rounds he's had. Real skillful, sharp shooter who's proving very much his worth on this stage. But a wonderful shot from Kelbrook. Hinges Spence who comes back again. Awkward left looking off a cut from Brook. Snaps the head back of Errol Spence. Got back behind his boxing now, Brook, but he doesn't want to be on the end of them punches. Oh, he's blinking again badly. Kelbrook, the eye's giving him real trouble. The other one. Obscuring his vision, making him feel uncomfortable. And here comes Spencer after that minute rest. Yeah, the confidence back. Good shot there from Spencer. Brook looking troubled here on the roads. Holding on again, Kelbrook. Yeah, he's hurt. That eye's playing in trouble. The eye against Golovkin, the eye against Errol Spence, but he's gone down on one knee. He can hardly see out of it. And he showed so much valiance, but can he get up and continue? I think he's going to sit it out. It is all over. And Errol Spence Jr. from the Lone Star State is a new star of world boxing. Congratulations. 
as the American becomes a world champion and makes it 22 wins on the spin. He was brilliant in the last few rounds. He showed so much guts as well at times. Super skills, but how much courage did Kel Brook show in that 10th round as well. Errol Spence Jr. wins a great fight. And your heart goes out to Kel Brook. Played with the eye again for the second time in a row. But really, you've got to take your hat off to the Texan for the way he went about that job and grew in confidence. You do have to take your hats off to um, Errol Spence because he was under fire for a few rounds. He was on his back foot.